Hi everyone, section 0 0.14 on lines. Let's start with some notation. Okay, so remember that two distinct points in the plane determine a line, this straight figure that connects the points. Let's assume that all these represent real numbers. So we have two points, x sub one, y sub one, the first point over here, and x sub two, y sub two, the second point over here. I might refer to them as p sub one and p sub two. Of course, I can interchange the notations. Now, an important number, an important parameter for this line is the slope, denoted by m, if it is defined. Try to remember what kind of lines have undefined slopes. And remember, slope is what over what. We're going to talk about that next. <laughs> okay, so let's say we have a slanted or tilted line in the xy plane. What are arguably the two most important or interesting points on the line? Well, quite possibly, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Now, if you have a slanted line that goes to the origin, both the x-intercept and the y-intercept will be at the origin, 0 comma 0. But if the tilted line does not go through the origin, then the x-intercept and the y-intercept will be at distinct points. The x-intercept here is at a, or more precisely, the point a comma 0 using ordered pair notation. Uh, nowadays, when teachers ask you for an x-intercept, you're supposed to report an ordered pair here, a comma zero, in parentheses. Likewise, when we talk about the y-intercept, it's tempting to talk about b, but technically it's the ordered pair zero comma b, corresponding to this point here. As the name suggests, the x-intercept is the point where the line intersects with the x-axis. The y-intercept is the point where the line intersects with the y-axis. Okay, back to slope. What is the slope of a line? It is what over what? It is rise over run. M is the classic notation for slope. So we can think of the rise as delta y, the change in y. Here's delta y, the change in y. We can think of the run as delta x, the change in x. And actually, you can take either order as long as you're consistent. So here, it makes sense that for the rise, I take the y-coordinate on the right point and subtract off the y-coordinate on the left point. Okay, whether the right point is higher or lower in the xy plane. But if I say that y sub 2 is the y coordinate of the right point over here, then x sub 2 better be the x coordinate of that point. Likewise, x sub 1 better be the x coordinate on the left point. So you can switch these ordered pairs, that's fine. Uh, but don't switch. Uh, the x1 and the x2 without switching the y1 and the y2 also. They both come in packages. <laughs> okay, rise over run. That's a measure of steepness and direction. Rise over run. Change in y over change in x. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Or you could switch these and switch these. So you could write it as y sub two minus y, sorry, y sub one minus y sub two, all over x sub one minus x sub two. That's equivalent. Why is it equivalent? Because how is y sub one minus y sub two related to y sub two minus y sub one? They are opposites, meaning that they differ by a factor of negative one. Likewise, x sub 1 minus x sub 2 is the opposite of x sub 2 minus x sub 1. It's like we're multiplying by negative 1. So basically, if you go from this fraction to this fraction, 
You're just multiplying the top and the bottom by negative one, basically, and that's legal. You're multiplying by one. Okay, so in this example here, the rise is positive. If the point up here were down here, then actually the rise would be negative. We really have a drop and the slope would be negative. Okay, usually we take the run to be positive and then the sign of the rise would be the sign of the slope. That's the basic idea. We usually take the run to be positive. The larger X coordinate minus the smaller X coordinate. All right, again, delta means change it. Delta Y over delta X. Not Y over X, it's change in Y over change in X. Uh, there's a physics teacher in North Carolina who got on physics textbook authors to, to change that. It's not Y over X, it's change in Y over change in X. We're relating changes. Basically, a slope indicates a rate of change. It's change in Y with respect to X. All right. Here's a related idea. Uh, this may be the most important thing about slope that you don't know yet. The interpretation of slope m as marginal change. So for every unit increase in x along the line, y will change by the slope m. So for example, let's say that I take any point on the line. Let's say this point here, x sub 1 comma y sub 1. Let's say that I run one unit to the right, to the east. Well, how do I have to change my y coordinate to get back onto the line, to get back onto the path? I have to change my y coordinate by m, the slope. If m is positive, I go up. If m is zero, I stay horizontal on this line. If m is negative, I go down. So for example, and this is an application in economics, here's a linear function that expresses the house value in dollars with respect to time and years. I should put units, uh, maybe the year 2000 corresponds to the uh, x-axis here, whoops. Maybe the year 2000 corresponds to the x-axis here. All right, uh, and maybe the y-intercept here is at uh, oh, I don't know, $200,000. So in the year 2000, on January 1st, 2000, the value of the house was $200,000. And let's say that the value of the house has increased linearly by this rate of change, $10,000 per year, linearly. Which means that every time the time increases by one year, like so, the value of the house increases by $10,000. like so. All right, one year, $10,000. One year, $10,000, and so forth. So we can interpret slope as a marginal change. If the x-coordinate, or t-coordinate maybe, increases by one unit, how much does the y-coordinate, how much does the y-coordinate change by? And that's indicated by the slope. Interpreting slope as marginal change. And that's very useful. That's related to the idea of differentials in calculus. Where you use tangent lines to model behaviors of curves. All right, so how can we interpret slope? Well, first of all, you have a positive slope when the line is going up, if the function is increasing. The slope is zero if we have a flat line, a horizontal line, and the slope is negative if the y coordinates are dropping with respect to x. The absolute value of m, the absolute value of the slope, measures the steepness of the line. So one way I look at it, you can think of the slope as the difficulty with which uh, you can move a car from left to right. So for example, on this horizontal line, the slope is zero, okay? Let's say the car is in neutral, you're pushing the car. Difficulty level zero. Well, if you have a hill where the slope is one, it's gonna be harder to get the car from left to right. If the slope is two, that's even steeper. It's even harder to move that car. Uh, slope equals three pi, 
uh, slopes don't have to be integers. Uh, slopes could be irrational as well. Uh, four, five, approaching infinity. All right. Actually, we say that the slope of a vertical line, like the y-axis, is undefined. But in a way, the slopes are approaching positive infinity. Let's play with Desmos. We can do that. Uh, let's go into Desmos. All right. Y equals MX. I'll add a slider. Whenever you put in a parameter like M, you can add in a slider, right? So here's Y equals 1X. Here's Y equals 2X. Y equals 3X. It's getting steeper, right? Here's Y equals 3.2X. Y equals 3.5X. Getting steeper, steeper, steeper. All right. Y equals 10X is very steep. All right. How about Y equals, oh, and of course you could just type it directly, right? Like Y equals 10X in green, that, that's superimposed over the red line. I'll, I'll flash red, green like that. Okay, same line. <laughs> if M is set to 10. Let's move the slider back. What's Y equals zero? Y equals zero X or Y equals zero? We're down to a flat horizontal line, the x-axis. Right. So y equals zero, that's the x-axis. Basic principle of graphing. The graph of an equation consists of all points whose coordinates satisfy the equation. The x-axis consists of all points with y coordinate zero. Zero comma one, zero comma two, 0 comma 3, 0 comma pi, and so forth. All right. Um, now, what about negative slopes? Well, here's here m equals negative 1. So uh, it's fairly easy to drop the car. If the car is in neutral, you can just let go. <laughs> if m equals negative 2, if that's a steeper negative slope, okay, so the car drops down pretty quickly. All right. So let's uh, go backwards. m equals negative 1x m equals negative 1, m equals negative 1x, m equals negative 2x. That's steeper. Line's going down. Okay. The slope gets more and more negative. The slope's approaching negative infinity, approaching a vertical line. Here's y equals negative 10x. Put a negative sign there. The green line, y equals negative 10x. All right. Uh, and again, the vertical line here, like the y-axis, undefined slope. What's the equation of the y-axis, by the way? It's going to be x equals zero. Because the y-axis consists of all points whose x-coordinate is zero. The origin, zero comma zero, zero comma one, zero comma two, zero comma three, zero comma pi, zero comma negative pi, and so forth. All right, again, the slope is undefined for this guy. For a vertical line. Because there's no run. <laughs> the run is zero, rise over run, you're dividing by zero. So slope is undefined. I don't care what the rise is. This is garbage. Slope is undefined. 